so good to see you, Dan. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Could have been better after that one. Yeah, it's nice to have you on an interview for a change. Uh, I feel tonight we're a bit of an injustice. What do you think, sir? Well, it finished 2-1, so the scoreline doesn't lie at the end of the day. We had the chances to win the game. We didn't take them. A few silly errors in defence, a few silly penalties cost us in the end. But it's about bouncing back and coming back stronger. Do you think we could have made more of the uh, time on the power play? I think we did have quite a bit, to be fair. Yeah, we had a lot of power play time. Um, we seemed to panic a little bit. Didn't move the puck as well as we could have done. We played strong last weekend on the power play. Um, we were we were short on the short handed. We didn't play very well last weekend. We improved that this week, but our power play seemed to suffer. I don't know if it was tired legs. Uh, we don't want to pull any excuses. Uh, we've got to we've got to shoulder the blame ourselves. Our power play could have been something that would have improved us today. If we've just got to move the puck a little bit quicker. And, and not panic so much. A few guys seem to be a little bit nervous, especially after after we went behind. People trying to rush, do a little bit too much themselves. It's a team sport, and I, I think we've got to come back stronger as a team. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree with that. Um, so, are you taking any positives out of tonight? Then, do you think there's there's room for improvement yet? And it's clearly identified what you're going to do next. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had a long chat in the room. Um, we've lost three on the bounce, and basically, we've got to we've got to shake it off. We're all grown men at the end of the day. We've got to come back strong next week. We've got to show that we can win games. We've got to fight for these playoff spots. It's a tough league this year. Um, positives from tonight, we created a lot of chances. We didn't finish them very well, but we did create a lot of offence. we just got to, like I said before, calm down a little bit, make the smart plays, not the selfish plays. And if we solidify ourselves a little bit in defence, I mean, we're going to move forward. We're, we're a strong team and we're, we're going to keep looking to make them playoffs. It's good to see there's a lot of positivity. Um, I, I mean, do you, th do you feel perhaps at this point in the season is, is the time when it's best to get the injuries over and done with? I mean, from severe to the milder ones at the minute. Yeah, well, I'd rather not add any, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> but uh, as it happens, we, we've had them. We'll have to we'll have to fight to kind of get through this difficult patch. We've got a lot of games, not a lot of bodies. I mean, we've got 23 registered players this year and we're struggling to put two lines out week in, week out because of injuries. Um, I think we've got guys due to come back. I'm going to speak to a lot of people this week and see where we're at with their recovery. Um, we've got a few that aren't due back till January, so at the end of the day it's about gritting our teeth and getting through a, di a difficult patch. We're not making any excuses with the number of bodies. We've got more than enough talent in the two lines that we had to win games. Uh, do you feel perhaps maybe it would have been a good idea to bring up one or two of the under-18s tonight, possibly a few of the Eagles players at all? Um, we've had some of them training with us. We are keen to get as many 18s and Eagles involved with us as we can. But it's a big jump. I think some people don't realise the step between under 18s, ENL2 and ENL1. Mm. There's a massive jump between all of them. And it's about getting guys that are ready to play with us. Um, to do that, they've got to train with us regularly. We put a couple of 18s on before and a couple of the Eagles. They've trained well one week, a little bit inconsistently, starting to slow practices down a little bit. So they moved off again. When they get their confidence back, they'll be back with us for sure. Um, and as soon as we think that they're ready, we'll have them playing for sure. But it's a it's a matter of communicating with the coaches of the Eagles, with the coaches of the 18s. It's a club. We've all got to be happy for them to play. And until that is the case, then I'm, I'm afraid it, it's not going to move forward. I mean, we want Chris Royds to play for us as much as he can. He's unfortunately picked up another injury. He's had a bit of an un unlucky season. But when he's back, it, it'll be on there. And there's a few in there that do look promising. But like I said, it's sometimes an attitude thing. Sometimes it's just a matter of making that step up. And as soon as all the pieces of the jigs are in place, then we'll hopefully see more of them coming through. It is something we're definitely keen to see. Well, it's good to hear. I know a lot of people ask from time to time what's going on with the Eagles. And it's nice to hear positive things and that you're definitely um, looking to build on that sort of spec. Um, on the off chance, perhaps there's another short bench again, which I, I assume there might be, given with injuries and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, what would be preventing you from playing out? Because I believe that you have experience as a forward as well. Um, what would stop you going out and Stewie going in the net? Would that be sort of a long decision kind of thing? Um, I think it's more Jared's decision than mine, but he doesn't like my attitude. <laughs> Uh, have you had much experience playing for the Hawks as, in a forward role before, or are you very happy? Um, I've, only, I've only played out one or two times. I mean, my first year at uni, I played out for under 18s at Telford just to keep my hand in the game. Um, it, it's not somewhere that I think I'd benefit the team. We've got better players than me. I think I, I'm a more. It's more beneficial to keep me in goal. Um, Shoes, Shoes still improving. He's still getting better. 
and I mean Jared do look to give him as much ice as we can. He, he knows that as well. He's happy with the position that that we're both in, and maybe it's something Jared might address if we're very very sure. But <laughs> until that point, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, still that's fair enough. I'm sure it answers a question for a lot of people, uh, which is always good stuff. Uh, on a final note, looking forward to uh, the next game, we're looking at Whitley Bay Warriors. How do you feel about that, especially given some of the results they've had this season, some kind of surprising losses and yet some surprising wins? Yeah, I, I'm not being funny, but every game we go into as a Hawks, we look for two points. Nothing less, nothing more. We want to win every game that we go into. I don't know if it always comes across that way, but we play Solway, we play Billingham, we play Whitley, Telford, Coventry, Trafford. Any team that we play against, we're looking for two points, nothing less. I don't, I don't really care what other people expect. It's my own goal is to win every game. If I didn't think we could, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, that's great stuff. Dan, it's been lovely talking to you. Thank you. Cheers. Good afternoon, Jared. It's nice to see you again. Hiya, Dan. How are you today, then? A bit disappointed, but uh, it's, it's hockey sometimes. I think uh, when you work hard, sometimes you get luck. And, and I think a couple of bounces tonight cost us, but we can't look at anyone but ourselves for that. Uh, simple as. As I said to Zangi, I feel it were a bit of an injustice. I mean, Telford took a lot of penalties, and, and the second goal to everyone were a bit of a shock. I don't think anyone saw the puck go in that particular direction. Um, so I'd say that's a lot more than anything. How do you feel? Uh, I don't think we can blame anyone but ourselves, to be honest. We had a number of power plays. Uh, we got a goal early in the first on the power play, but then after that, we just seemed to stop, stop playing. There was no movement. We weren't pulling them out of position. We were just happy to pass it around the outside and then shoot it at them every now and then. Uh, we made some stupid plays um, that led to them getting their chances. Um, we spoke about it in the dressing room when we got back on the ice. Same mistakes happening over and over again and it cost us. There's no one we can look at by ourselves. We can't blame it on anything. We can't blame it on a short bench. We've just got to blame it on the way we played tonight. I, I was going to make a point and ask if you feel that you know, play, having 12 men against 19, that might seem a little intimidating. Um, I mean, obviously, if that's the way you feel. Can you take any positives from tonight at all? Um, I think the fact that probably we can't play play as bad. You know, um, I think at times we worked hard. Um, in that first period, we we played a good solid game. I think then after that we just didn't stick to the plan. And I think you know when guys try to do too much on their own, um, mistakes happen. That happened tonight. We were out of position too much, um, and Telford got their breaks. Um, but we can't have as many power plays as we did and not start punishing teams you know at the end of the day we saw it last week with Billingham they get their goals on the power play there's no one we can look at but ourselves when we get the power plays we've got to put the puck away I don't think we were dangerous on the power play that's something we've got to work on now, a couple of comments that were, were spoken between periods when just liaising with fans and stuff is that Evo spent to spend a lot of time around the net but with small backup do you think that's maybe because he's, he's such a fast skater do you think maybe it was because people were out of position or just the flow of the game no, I think uh, I don't think he was on his own. I think the problem I think we have here is the moment we have an import, everything's put on their shoulders and they're seen as the saviour. And at the end of the day, it's a team game. You've got to move the puck. You've got to use your teammates. If you don't move the puck, then your teammates are out of the game. It's simple as. Um, uh, I'm kind of getting tired of it, to be honest. Every time you read something, it's import this, import that. We've got a lot of good guys out there. Matt Vinnie again, man of the match, um, worked, you know, his bag off for the team, you know, works hard, creates chances, and he's our best forward at the moment. So, you know, people saying Evo's on his own, Vinny's there creating the chances. So, I think you know it's an easy option out to say that he's he's on his own. I don't think that's right. Well, that's fair enough said. I mean, it's just opinion and comments really. Uh, everyone interprets the game in a different way. I felt tonight particularly that uh, we saw a pretty good session from Dave Meikle. I, th I think he really shined tonight. Um, and Ollie seemed to have some pretty good saves at last minute as well. I mean, do you think besides um, Matt as the forward, and which I can agree with, he definitely stood out tonight. Do you think we had a, a few standout moments tonight that really? Uh, I think in patches we had guys working on. I think Sam Dunford's played well again. He's really upped his game in the last last month. Um, he's really using his speed to advantage and creating opportunities. Um, and I think what it comes down to now is we've got to start putting him away. Last weekend we were a lot more clinical up in Solway. We didn't have that many chances, but we scored four goals. Good finishes tonight. Everything's at the bullseye. You know, you put it at the bullseye, you're never going to score. Um, you've got to make the goalie work. When we did make him work, we scored. Um, but after that, you know, shots were from bad angles, bad decisions, and you know, all you're doing is padding the goalie stats that way. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, we we do have some more difficult games coming. Do you think we might be able to patch up for them, especially which Whitley Bay next week? Uh, I think we've just got to come ready. You know, we've signed twenty three guys. You know, we're in a bad spot with injuries, but there's nothing we can do about it. 
Um, I know people have spoken about bringing guys from the Eagles up, but the fact of the matter is they're just not ready. It's a big leap from ENL2 to this league. Uh, and, you know, it's not fair on me to throw them in at the deep end when they don't understand our systems. And, you know, you know if they can see goals, you know, what, what are we going to do? We have people on their backs saying they shouldn't be on the ice. So, you know, I go with the guys we've got. They're working hard. Tonight, we made stupid mistakes. There's no two ways about that. We made silly mistakes. If we cut that out, then we're going to be a good, solid team. So definitely looking to, to develop further on this. Um, I mean, especially, as I say, with, with some big games left. Um, just to sort of build on what I asked Dangy, we, we when we've got a short bench, how come we don't particularly see Dangy playing out forward much? Do you feel that he is best as the netminder? When you've got one of the top two netminders in the league, you don't play him out. Simple as that. That's a ridiculous. Uh, and I'm not having a go at you, Dan. I'm just saying when you've got one of the top two netminders in the league, you don't play him <laughs> out. You leave him in the nets. Tonight he made good saves again when he had traffic in front of him. You know, there's. He's carrying a bit of an injury that's not helping, but you know he comes and he battles every night and he gives us a chance to win. You know tonight's goals were unfortunate, you know, and when he plays out, all he does is take penalties. Nice, no, it's, it's a fair point. I mean, especially when it comes down to if you've got the bare minimum eight men and two netminders, you know. It's if a we get to that bit. that point, then maybe you know we'll consider it. But you know, when I put a team together, I go in. You look at who's your strongest lineup. Dangy and Nets is our strongest lineup. Uh, there's no two ways about it. I wouldn't look at, at anyone else coming in in front of him. You know, I want him there. It gives us a chance to win. That's fair enough. I mean, it, it's fair point. That's what you do, and you're good at what you do. And I don't think anyone can dispute that. Um, talking about the lineup we've got so far, do you think maybe this is the final lineup now? We're just going to wait for injuries, or do you think maybe there's one or two people out there you might? No, I'm starting to look look for guys. Um, I've said in the room there. You know, too many weeks now giving guys second, third chances, uh, and they're not coming to play. Uh, mistakes are costing us, and uh, I need to start looking now uh, at bringing additional guys. It's not easy. There's not many guys out there, but if there's people we think can make our team better, then I'm going to be aggressive towards going to get them. That's always positive news to hear. I mean, it'd be great to see more people, see what happens with the squad, and uh, where we end up towards the end of the season. Playoff spots, definitely. That's what I'm hoping for. I think we'll get there. I, I definitely know we'll get there. It's just a matter of time patience and whatever else happens along the way. Um, just to finish off, uh, I believe we've had quite a few updates on Jordan Ashington and his status and things like that. Um, just to ask you yourself, I mean you've obviously had more contact, you went to see him in hospital, how is he at the minute, is he? He's on the road to recovery, I think he's in good spirits now, obviously it was a, a really serious uh, incident, um, you know, it wasn't so much that he, he's ruptured his spleen, it was the amount of blood that he lost. Um, and it's a long road back for him, but you know he's already circled the game. He thinks he'll be ready to come back for. He's eager to get back involved with the boys. Um, I know he's at home now. He's been released from hospital. So once he's ready, he wants to come across to a game and he wants to be involved. You know, and we're we're looking for him to come back. You know, I've spoken to him. You know, he's not going. His spot's there for him. You know, he's one of our our team. He's got a lot of respect from his teammates, and I've got a lot of time for him. And I think the sooner we can get him back, the better. But we're not going to rush him. You know, he's just had a really serious mm. uh, operation, and his health comes first. Uh, but you know, as soon as he's ready to come over, we want to get him back in with the boys, get him involved, and and let him know he's he's part of this team. Um, and we wish him all the best on his road to recovery. Definitely. I mean, uh, I think we all do. We've got a nice car today, and hopefully, he receives that soon. Uh, are there any final thoughts tonight? Maybe you want to add. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just a case of we come back Thursday. You know, this next weekend coming up dictates you know our season. I think we've got Whitley and Sutton. Sutton have beaten Whitley tonight, so that's two more points they've got up on us. Uh, and we've got to start taking points. You know, we've got to come ready to play uh, and ready to take that two points. And it's a massive weekend for us. And I think if we come with the right attitude, we'll take four points over the weekend. I think the challenge should help uh, people get more into the mind, don't you think? We'll get. Oh. Anyway, it's lovely talking to you, Jared. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Dan.